Convention 1980. Your county tape informational service for this month mostly originates from Cincinnati, where the National Farmers Organization convenes. Here's that challenge issued by President Devon Woodland. I want you, after this convention is over, go back to your counties, go into the county agent, go into the ASCS office, you find out how much grain is in your county. You find out how much meat in the form of hogs and cattle and sheep are in your county. You find out how much corn is in your county. Find out how much is there produced. Find out who those producers are. Find out who they are and then go after 10% of the volume in that county. And people, we have counties that have as much as 75 and 80% of the commodity in their county within the structure of this organization. We don't have enough of those counties. And then we have counties that don't have any. And if we can average 10% of all the commodities in every county, I'll tell you we'll write our own ticket. Devon Woodland, president of the NFO, speaking to the 1980 convention. Jim Buck of Illinois represents national farmers at the FFA conventions at Kansas City. Here's his report. What would you think if you found a place where someone walked up to you and said, I'd like to join National Farmers Organization? Very first words out of their mouth. Then almost immediately, somebody else walked up and asked about a career with National Farmers Organization. Then a different person walked up and said, I'd like to buy a potload of feeder lambs. Can NFO help me? A fourth person walks up and says, I'm a high school ag teacher. Can you provide me with some materials on the National Farmers Organization so I can teach my students what you're all about? Then a fifth person walks up and says, I'd like to buy 2,000 head of feeder lambs. Can I get them through NFO? Well, that spot is exactly the spot that Ray Olson and I were in at that career show in Kansas City that was held in conjunction with the FFA convention. And we feel like that you certainly would like to have someone in that spot when you get that kind of response. Because those weren't questions I made up. Those are some of the exact things that these young men walked up to us and said. Now at that show, to get into just a few numbers, we passed out approximately 2,000 pencils, ran out the first day in a three-day show. 1,500 bumper stickers, hundreds and hundreds of red farm power buttons, scores of collection, dispatch, and delivery maps, dozens of caps, and countless brochures, in addition to talking with hundreds of FFA members, parents, ag teachers, and student ag teachers. The topic of discussion with nearly ag every ag teacher that we spoke with centered around requests for marketing materials that they could use in their classroom or on what we could supply them in specific terms on the National Farmers Organization. Now these are requests that we need to evaluate very carefully and act on accordingly because I think we do have an opportunity there. With all of the, the thousands of people attending that National FFA Convention, it is an excellent opportunity for your organization to provide educational and informational information to the future leaders in agriculture. Here's some unrehearsed dialogue with two young farmers. Bob Quick, National Secretary of FFA, he's from Illinois, and John Menke, a dairy staff rep for the National Farmers Organization, he's from Wisconsin. We sat in on this conversation just after Bob Quick had addressed the National Convention of NFO and had stressed individual determination and efficiency. As I said today, you have to be a, uh, a good purchaser. You're the chief purchasing agent, and the American farmer has to realize that. Also, uh, as a, a farmer, you have to use your resources. You have to go back to your records. You have to find out what is profitable. You have to find out what size of machine you really need. And until the American farmer does that, then they're going to be very inefficient. Bob Quick, National Secretary of the FFA. John Medke of Marinette County in Wisconsin. He was kibitzing, and the word efficiency sort of livened him up. John, what about efficiency? 
I'm saying efficiency or inefficiency today isn't the thing that's hurting the farmer, the American farmer. In a few cases, that's true. There are some poor farmers out there, but it's not the one thing that's hurting the farmer. What do you think is the main problem? His bargaining power and his ability to wake up and just go out there and bargain for a price. To organize, and that's the only way the farmer's going to get it is through organization. What you're saying is they need to help each other and go into the marketplace together and, and be organized at the point where the sale is made. If they don't get the forest, the farm isn't going to make it. And I've been a farmer under my dad for 15 years, and he's been a member for 15 years. And I know how things are, and I know the NFO has a lot to do with the price what farmers are getting today. And if it wasn't for the NFO, I know for a fact we wouldn't be getting the prices today. There's no way a dairy farmer can market entirely as an individual, is there? No, there isn't. He has to work with his neighbors somewhat. If he wants to get a price, he sure does. He has to organize. After Menke had described working together in the marketplace, I turned back to Bob Quick for this final question. Supposing you have a well-favored farm with superb farmland, and you've got it paid for, and you have adequate sources of credit and all that, should you still try to go into the marketplace alone? No, I think that uh, what was just said here, you've got to be organized. I think in the future, that, that's what we're talking about, being organized. Uh, down in my area of the state, we are organized. We, we're trying to, to become that way and be that way. Uh, if you don't, the markets won't be there in the future. And I think it's very important what was just said. The market is, is uh, very important for the American farmer, and of course, that's in Illinois, too. Bob Quick, National Secretary of the FFA, and John Menke, Dairy Staff Rep for the National Farmers Organization. Two young farmers conversing about how to face the future in agriculture. This interview is with a new member of the National Farmers Organization from what county in Kansas? Gove County. Is this wheat country? Yes, it is. A lot of cattle and some large feedlots. Now, part of the reason that we're having this conversation is that you're a new member, aren't you, of the NFO? This is true. I joined the organization in July of uh, 1980. Uh, put part of my uh, 79 crop through the organization. The main crop that I have is wheat. And I've contracted part of my 81 crop uh, for harvest delivery. How come? Did you feel that the National Farmers Organization had a better approach to the problems you were encountering? Well, there's uh, somewhat of a movement in Gove County to uh, find new bargaining uh, power and um, I, among some of the younger farmers and I think that uh, after uh, going through some of the oh, involvement with AAM uh, and their attempts at bargaining we've decided that um, NFO has already been through a lot of this and we would like to uh, become involved in that. We'd like to get that price up above the cost of production. I'm real interested in the program marketing and uh, finding other people in my area who will want to go along with that and will just try to sell some wheat every month is my goal. I've been having this conversation with Vaughn Flora of Gove County, Kansas. That's in the western wheat country in the state of Kansas. Interviewing Eldred Phillips, tell about your experience in collective bargaining with a contract. Well, Phil, I'm really impressed when uh, uh, in the late summer uh, a time came up for a renewal of our contract with Wilson and Company at Albert Lee. There were seven collection points involved in this contract. Uh, uh, at the meeting at the Faribault Collection Point, all 18 members that were present uh, voted not to renew the contract as it existed. There were some things that we did not like, one specifically being that we were tied to the South St. Paul market, and we wanted to eliminate that, uh, that feature. Uh, the NFO members at the other collection points all voted to reject the present contract and send our NFO negotiators back to the bargaining table to see if they couldn't do better with Wilson or find another outlet for our production. Now, Eldred, this is a regular part of the process in NFO bargaining, that you have a ratification meeting and you can send the bargainers back to bargain some more, huh? That is right, Phil. That is absolutely right. The result of this was then that probably three weeks later, we were called to another meeting on a different 
and the, our negotiators had come up with uh, a different contract with Wilson and Company, which the members accepted uh, to a great degree. And we're very happy with this contract. And I'm uh, extremely impressed with the power that we have as members by joining together in truly collective bargaining. Uh, I'm really gratified to be a part of this uh, movement to do something. Together we can help each other and ourselves, whereas individually we could do nothing. In these new member interviews, I'm having a conversation now with a couple of cousins from Illinois, Wayne Mollett and Daryl Mollett. Their fathers were brothers. And they've recently joined the NFO. And I'm going to ask, why did you guys join the NFO? I knew it was the only way we could get, get a prize is go through the NFO. And uh, I've, I've looked at other organizations, the co-ops and the Farm Bureau and the other ones, and there's none of them really... They got what they got to offer is is fine, you know, like they offer their insurance and their feed and stuff like that. But there's none of them got to par to bargain for commodity. And that's what I went for. Uh, you, a young guy like me, uh, trying to get started, it's awful hard, and, and uh, we gotta have we gotta have a, a future to look forward to, some place to go. Which one of you cousins is the older one? I'm the oldest. I'm 25. How old are you, Wayne? Nineteen. Do you see it the same way that the bargaining approach to, your, to the young farmer's problem? Is this one of the reasons you joined NFO? It's the reason I joined because there's no other hope we've got other than the National Farmers Organization. I'm tired of working two jobs to try to make a living, and I feel this is our only hope. In our county, for no more members than, than we got, we had 97 at that seminar, and it was all us. I mean, but a lot of kids that... In our area, they're, uh, most of them ain't really st stuck their neck out yet. They're just wait waiting. The the old man's uh, uh, doing backing them and signing the notes. But you and Daryl did get him to come out to this grain seminar. Yeah, yeah, we did. He. How did you do it, Daryl? Just sit and talk to him and tell him the facts of what we know and that we see no other way and we want their participation with us. The Mollet Cousins. One of the principal guest speakers was Ag Secretary Bob Berglund, speaking to NFO in the closing weeks of his administration of USDA. That elections replace people like me and Jimmy Carter and members of the Congress of the United States and governors and all. And those elections, therefore, will change policies, as policies have changed from time to time. Reinforcing, therefore, the need for organizing in the private market sector, such as is the creed of the NFO. You cannot depend on government to provide you the kind of income you deserve. You've got to use the enormous economic and political power in your hands to advance your cause as a, an organized part of this free society. And you know how to do it. You've had experience at it. I've been a member since NFO was organized in my county in the 1960s. And I know... I know how difficult it is, I know how complicated and how discouraging it can be at times, but I also know this, it's the best hope. And so just keep at it. A candid view by Bob Berglund, who served in public life from the late 1950s through the 60s, the 70s, and through 1980 as a Minnesota congressman and as United States Secretary of Agriculture. This was your monthly tape service report from the radio division of NFO, compiled and edited by Don Mack. I'm Phil Allen, reminding you that on the flip side, there's an interesting brief segment you can use as an organizational tool. It's Devon answering a reporter's question about NFO gold. City people's wages are getting higher every day While the farmer counts on money from the PC they say the only way for the farmer to go is all.